this lesson, we're going to take a look at isolation precautions and how to manage them. So precautions are just a fancy word for what to do to protect yourself and the patient. Um, standard precautions are um, what you should be doing with every patient. So this includes hand hygiene. So soap and water when you need to, when your hands are visibly soiled. Um, the, that cool uh, sanitizer foam is another great way to uh, make sure that you're uh, keeping your hands clean. Good rule of thumb is to always wear gloves around a patient. You don't happen to know, uh, you don't always happen to know what's going on with them. So a good example would be like, um, if you just got a patient and you help them get out of bed and you don't have your gloves on and then you do the, the MRSA swab, the meth methicillin resistant uh, staph aureus swab, and it's positive, they should have been on contact to begin with. And so, oh no, you should have worn gloves. So anytime you don't have a solid, solid history on your patient where you know that you can do something without gloves, like giving them food, I typically always try to wear gloves. Um, it's just a good habit to be in that way. I'm always protecting myself. The other thing you want to do is also wear goggles or a splash guard when uh, you need to like empty the Foley. Last thing you want to do is get splashed in the face. It's gross, but just make sure that you're using, that's a good, uh, just a good thing. Hey, I, I know that there's a potential to be splashed. Then I'm going to grab my goggles or splash guard. Um, the best thing that you can do though, is to use your nursing judgment. Um, if you think that you're not going to be um, exposed to anything and you have a pretty good reason for doing that, then by all means, that's on you. But the important thing to remember, so like, let's say you have a patient that all of a sudden gets diarrhea and you're like, oh, I can just do this with gloves. And you're like, you know what? That's mm, could be potentially a uh, C diff. You know what? Let's go ahead and gown up, double glove, maybe some goggles, uh, protect yourself. So just make sure that, uh, you always want to, uh, just use your nursing judgment. Another cool thing about standard precautions is they're usually included with all of your other isolation precautions. So it's just, it's usually just standard plus whatever, whatever other precaution you have, like for contact, which would be like a glove or a gown. And we'll get into that here in a few. So contact precautions are pretty easy to remember. The best way it's physical contact. If you are going to touch the person, so person to person, um, if you literally are going to touch them, that's contact. So if you, if your patient has contact precautions, it's usually a gown plus, um, standard, which is here, these two. Um, so examples of contact precautions are going to be MRSA, which is methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. The other one is, um, MD RO, multi-drug resistant organism. And the last one, my favorite, by favorite, I mean not favorite, uh, is C. diff. So Clostridium difficile, which is the one that's associated with uh, frequent antibiotic um, therapies that cause uh, pretty prolific diarrhea. Um, you, you have to make sure that you're doing contact plus wash your damn hands. Seriously. <laughs> If, if you have a potential, this is where like fecal oral route comes in. If you have a patient that has C. diff and you don't wash your hands and then you go eat your sandwich, it will ruin your day or maybe even your week. So make sure you wash your hands after your C. diff patients. Um, now there's the next couple that we're going to talk about are droplet and airborne. And I get mixed up sometimes too, but we're going to address those. So let's look at droplet first. So these are droplets. This is going to be your, your patient with droplet precautions. They are transmitted through sneezing, coughing, and talking. Um, examples of this one are going to be like flu or meningitis or mumps. What you're going to do for your droplet precautions, you're going to have your mask. So it's like a surgical mask um, or just like an over-the-face mask. Those are going to be fine. This is going to be different than your airborne precautions, which we'll talk about in a minute. But what you're going to want to do is focus on wearing a mask sometimes with this, um, goggles or a, uh, splash guard. And you're going to want to do that plus standard precautions. So let's look at airborne now that we've got a good handle on droplet. Like droplet precautions, you're going to be dealing with a mask, but it's different. So transmission. So there it's still transmitted through like uh, coughing and sneezing and even breathing, 
but the difference is these are things that are smaller than five microns. So they're like aerosolized. They're really, 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 really tiny particles. Um, so what you have to do is this is an N95 mask. So you have to use this and your patients are usually going to be like in a negative pressure room. So you're, the diseases that, that you're going to have for airborne precautions are tuberculosis, TB. Um, and there's another interesting part about this negative pressure room is something called the ante room. And I'm going to, this is one of my pet peeves. I'm just letting you guys know. There's something called an ante room. And if you have a patient that is in a negative pressure room and they are on airborne precautions, Everybody has to go through this inner room. So if this is your patient's room, you'll have this room off here. So this is your main door. You'll have another door here. You have to go in here first, and then there's going to be another door here. You'll prep in here, and then you'll go in here. You're done. You go out the same way. This door does not get opened ever. So make sure you educate your patients. Make sure you educate your patient's family. Make sure you educate any healthcare providers. I can't tell you how many times doctors have walked up, do, 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 and they start to open that door and I lose it. Keep that door shut if they're on airborne precautions. I'll tell them like they're on airborne. Make sure that that room stays shut and you go through the ante room. Um, so just me. And the other thing is make sure you get your N95 mask on. One other thing about the N95 mask is that you have to be fitted for it. And um, so people for me, like people like me who have a beard, um, the N95 mask actually won't create a seal. And so everything has to be sealed off. So I have to wear a hood, a ventilated hood. Um, and you have to usually like your occupational hazard section of the hospital or your facility will actually fit you for it. So make sure you get fitted for it and make sure that you are clear to wear one of these N95 masks before you take care of your, um, your airborne patients. Now I want to hit on a couple of nursing things um, that don't qu quite fit anywhere else in the lesson. And that's what you need to be doing for your patient. Um, being in the hospital is already tough, right? They have this disease that they could actually transmit to somebody else. And what we don't want to do is uh, make them feel isolated from everybody else. And so what you need to do is when you're in there, like just because you have gloves and gown on, like you're still allowed to like, console your patient, build or build rapport, right? Ask questions and engage. And when I say ask questions and engage, I'm not talking about like, hey, I'm going to go through your admission. I want to know, hey, what are you into? What do you like to watch? Um, it wasn't uncommon to have patients that were watching TV. I had one one patient one time that had Z diff and he loved Star Wars. Man, we talk Star Wars all day because I, I know what it feels like, like to, because I'm actually MRSA, uh, I'm an educator carrier for MRSA. So anytime I would be admitted to the hospital, they'd swap me and I'd have to be on contact precautions. So don't isolate your patients um, and make them feel like they're gross people. And so that's where this, this, this concept of giving a damn. So give a damn about your patients when you go in and say, Hey, Hey, how are you doing today? You know, Hey, this is a cool show. Are you really into this? Is it boring? And then just engage your patients so that you, so that they actually are made to feel like people and not just patients locked in a hospital room. When we look at nursing concepts for isolation precautions, we want to focus on safety and also infection control. Not only these are not just concepts just for you, but they're also for your patients. So remember to focus on these. So let's recap. When we use standard precautions, we want to focus on using good hand hygiene and good judgment. So with contact precautions, you also want to make sure that you're using a gown plus your standard precautions. If you have droplet precautions, make sure you wear a mask. It's a surgical mask. It's different from airborne, which has to use the 95 and use the, the negative pressure room and the ante room. And make sure you, if you have to yell at people to make sure they don't use the ante room because you want to make sure that the patient is um, not potentially transmitting any, um, any sort of airborne illness to anybody else. Make sure that they use that, including the providers, make sure they know, Hey, he's on airborne, go through the inner room. Um, also combine them. And then when, when in doubt, uh, use combinations of, uh, PPE to protect yourself just to make sure that, Oh, Hey, you know what? This looks a little bit like C diff. Let's go ahead and throw on a gown, right? So just use your judgment um, and use combinations of of, uh, of your PPE and your precautions to protect yourself. That way we don't potentially get anybody else sick.
That's all for this lesson with isolation precautions. Make sure you check out all the resources attached to this lesson. Now go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing.